Hello people, welcome back. I thought what I'd do today, show you how to make these lovely little pockets. But I thought what I'd do first was let you see everything that I'm going to use. And I'm going to explain to you why you don't need to use most of these or what you can use instead of. So first of all, these are the little pockets that we're going to be making. Really, really cute vintage style journaling pockets with little tags. You can have them open as an envelope or closed. And this one I've made a little pocket to slip a little tag in. And I think this, these papers are absolutely beautiful. They're from Creative Fabrica. I'll actually leave a link in the description so you can download the same ones if you like. So, put these aside. I am, you do not need, if you have some lovely paper, you don't need to do any inking or any distressing or anything like that, but I will show you how to do it. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, it's not going to show you what is it? Distress ink. Yeah, this is Tim Holtz Distress Ink. It's really lovely for putting an aged effect on your papers. And I'm going to be applying it with this. This is the Sizzix. Do you know, I forgot what you call it. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be using the Distress Ink with that. And I'm also going to be using these beautiful little stamps. You don't have to use these. Everything I'm showing you so far you can do without. But if you do have an ink pad and some nice little stamps then of course you can use them. They are to give a little a bit more of an aged look. I'm going to be using my bone folder of course but you don't have to use one. You can use a ruler. Anything flat really is just for creasing the edges. This is my hole punch um, you don't even have to use that. These are for me tags. You don't have to put holes in your tags. If you want to, I shall leave a link to a video that shows you how to do that without using the punch. This is my scoring tool. I'm not going to be using my scoring board, even though there is quite a bit of scoring to do. I'm going to show you how to do it again, just using pencil and this. That's it. This is just for decoration for the tags and for closing up the envelopes. You can use wool if you don't have anything like this. You can use some pretty wool, anything you like really, just to decorate. You don't even have to decorate them if you don't want. You can just leave them as is. But they are so pretty. And this is the paper that I'm going to be using today. I hope you can see that. This is absolutely gorgeous. I did download several vintage paper packs from Creative Fabrica. I'll see if I can find them all and leave a link to, to all of them. But um, this has to be, you can get two out of these because the size of paper you need is six by six. So I shall cut it and then I shall be right back. Okay, I'm back with this. I thought I would leave that nice little flower on the paper. I just think it's really lovely. So the scoring. Yes, I forgot to mention, did I mention you would need a ruler? I can't remember. I forgot to get the ruler out. You will also need a ruler. So, now I do have the measurements here. Right, you've got to decide first. Obviously, on my paper, this is going to be the top and the bottom. So, the top and the bottom needs to be scored at three quarters of an inch. Now, I will show you how to do this without a scoring board, even though that's what I normally use. So, three quarters of an inch. Just make sure I'm getting this right. With help of our pencil. Right, three quarters of an inch there. And three quarters of an inch here. I'm going to measure all of these are three quarters of an inch and I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch me doing it in excruciatingly slow real time. Okay, I should just check that. Yes, so what you do, you still need your ruler. I'm going to use my scoring tool. 
you don't have to use a scoring tool you can use a pair of scissors you can use a bank card another ruler um, the tip of a pen lid anything like that but I'm just going to score mine with my little scoring tool make sure I go all the way through Motion detected at the front door. Okay, so that's the top and the bottom scored. Now we need to do the two sides. So one side has to be at one and a half inches scored and one has to be one and three quarters it doesn't really matter which one okay that's all the scoring done and I also forgot to mention you will need a pair of scissors I am definitely not on form today. Sorry about that. Never mind. Uh, I should know what I'm like by now. Right, so these four corners are going to have to come off, but we're going to angle cut or mitre them as it's called. So I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, that score line there. We're going to cut it to that score line at a slight angle. That's called mitering. And we're going to do the same at this side. Mitre at a small angle right to the corner. So hopefully, oh, I've done it right first time. So we'll do the same at this corner. Might at an angle to the corner mark. And this one. Okay, I'll speed it up now. Okay, get, put these in the recycle. We won't need won't be needing those bits anymore. I also forgot to mention these bits when I cut off the paper into two pieces of six by six I was left with a little bit. Don't throw those out either because we're going to need them in a bit. Right now I'm going to take my bone folder. You can take whatever you want with a flat edge just to crease these uh, score marks, these folds. Give them a nice crisp fold there. Okay, now we decide which is the top and the bo top and the bottom. Okay, so my flowers up there and the writing's up there, so this is going to be the bottom for me. So I'll turn it over. Now you can decide. This is going to be the back, and these are going to be glued. You can either glue with the big flap over that side or the small flap over that side. I prefer glue on the small one because it looks more central. And then you can decide whether you want the bottom and then the folds or the folds and then the bottom. I personally think it looks much neater that way but that's entirely up to you. So you just need where's my glue? You just need a thin strip of glue. That's going off that bit. Try not to get it too near the edge or it will splurt out into your envelope and stick it all up on the inside and we don't want that. Okay, so just let that dry, give it a good squish, get it all nice and stuck and this is going to be the bottom so I'm just going to put some glue around the bottom three edges there, that might be a little bit too much there, but that's enough, right, okay. Give it a good squish, get that glue nice and stuck. These are very simple envelopes. I, I love them so much and I just love the, the vintage paper. I just think it gives it a really nice look. So, that's it. I mean, you can leave it for there. You can leave it there if you want. Because they look nice on their own as long as you use... Drop something. As long as you use a really nice paper, then the project more or less looks after itself. But you can see there that these are not quite even. 
So if that bothers you, you can mitre it a little bit more. Yeah, I'm not going to keep going because I'll end up with them all tiny. Okay, so that's that. You can absolutely leave it there if you want. I just think they're really cute. You can use them. I think the there's quite a few videos on doing these, these little pockets. And the, I think they're called coin pockets or journaling pockets or something like that. But you can put anything in. You could even put gifts cards in. Um, you can use them for journaling, for scrapbooking, for gifts. Just for your own little bits of ephemera, whatever you have. So, anyway, what I'm going to do... The re oh, I've lost my little tool there. So... This is Distressing, as I showed you before, by Tim Holtz, and it's it's vintage photo. Right, so basically, you can, this, you don't have to use. You can just use a kitchen sponge, cut up a kitchen sponge, or just skip this bit altogether, it's entirely up to you. But what you can do is just give the paper a bit of an aged look, just by going around the edges, and just putting a little bit of, of this distressed ink, this Distress ink on. I like to put a little bit more in the corners, just to make it a bit more authentic. But I just think it gives it a really nice look. Okay, that looks amazing, doesn't it? Just a little bit of aging around the edges but like i say you don't have to do that absolutely do not have to do that you can in fact you can download paper that looks even more aged than this one did originally so i think now we shall make oh i'll show you how to put a pocket on as well i forgot about that so supposing you want a little pocket on the front which i have done with this i just think that they are so very very simple to make um, I'll show you how to do that when I'm finished with the, the tag. So you decide how big you want the tag. Do you know what? I lose everything there we are. <coughs> so I don't want a massive one. Bear in mind my cutting skills are not brilliant so this is probably going to look all over the place but you can measure it and cut it properly if you want. I have um, a tag punch but I'm not going to use that I'm going to show you how to do it you just take a bit from the corner turn that around if I can remember that's it make sure it's the right way use that as a guide and cut along there and then you have a little tag even with that I can't manage to get it straight oh <laughs> never mind Right, so the, what I'm going to do now is punch a hole in kind of the middle. Probably won't be in the middle, knowing me. But you don't have to do that. And to be honest, if I can just show you again that one I've just had. A little pocket. Normally, when I make these tags, they're just really for sure. So there's nothing on the back. As you can see, it's just white. But with this one... I thought I would stick two pieces together and I think that's good if you don't have a corner um, sorry a hole punch you can put just a little bit just a little hole in with your scissors I'll just start a little hole take a pencil and make the hole as large as you want just by doing that so you have two pieces exactly the same and you do that with the both the pieces you make the little hole because on the other side the hole is going to be all jagged jagged so what you do is you two you do two two pieces like this the same size doesn't even have to be the same design I think they were made from, made from different papers and then because the jaggedy bit's going to be on the inside when you stick them together it's going to look okay so that's the way to do it without a hole punch there are usually alternatives for anything you want to do in paper crafting so you don't have to rush out and buy like tons of expensive tools so. I think I will age this one as well, the tag, keep it consistent. Okay, I won't bother doing it at the back because this is just for the video and I don't think anyone's going to really see it. So, 
you can leave both there. I'm going to put, using a slip knot, I'm going to put a little bit of twine through there. But you could just, you could just use brown wool or anything that looks old really. Maybe you have something you can take off some clothes or a package. Just have a look around and see what you have in the house. Yeah, that was useless. I've told you watching me doing anything like this is painful. Because I just have no coordination. Sorry about that. Okay, so there's your little tag. I just think they're so cute and so easy to make. You make great gifts, tags for your gifts as well. What's that doing there? Right, so what was I going to do? Yes, now I am going to take my ink and my stamps. These are really cute stamps. Decide which one I want on there. It doesn't really matter. Just choose one. I should use a little stamping block as well. If you haven't ink, if you don't have ink or Stamps don't worry about it. It looks really nice like that, doesn't it? It's, there's no need for fancy tools or even inks or anything like that, you know. So I think as long as you've got the printer to print off the paper, or if you're just practicing, just use a piece of cardstock or a piece of paper, whatever you have, just to practice the, the process. So I'm going to ink this with, I should have shown you, a Hobbycraft ink pad. I love, I love their stuff. They're really good. And I'm sure you like seeing blurred products on you in your face all the time. So I am going to stamp this off once and then I am going to put it oh, I was going to put it on here, wasn't it? On there. So it gives it a very faded, more vintage look. Um, are we going to be able to see it this time? Yay! So you can see that it just gives it a bit of a bit more of a vintage look. I'll clean that in a bit. Um, I want something on the front of here as well, something larger, something like this perhaps. Just do the same thing. I'm not using the stamping platform for this because it does not have to be accurate at all. So I'm just going to stamp that there and that should be okay. You don't even have to do that, just stamp it on the back again if you want, whatever. So that's about it. Um, if you want to, you can have it closed and tie some twine around like I've done with that one and just slip the tag inside. That's what happens when I, I ink it and then stamp it straight on there without stamping it off first. It's just a bit too vivid and you want it a bit more faded like that. So anyway, that's what you can do if you want it closed. Um, you can use different types of twine, like I say, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be the brown, you can use different colours. I've got a cute little bee on that one. Right, I said I would show you how to make a pocket. It's just a matter of getting oh hang on, I might have one there. Oh, I can just use this. Okay. Yeah, so just cut it to the same width, which I'm bound not to do. Right, is that the same width? as good as. Right, so when you make a pocket all you have to do is just cut from one side, from halfway up one side and it doesn't really matter, you could cut it along there, you could cut it along there, just cut it at an angle and that's your little pocket and that just goes on the front like that. So I mean obviously I would age that as well but you just stick that on the front with a bit of glue and then you can put your stamp, your tags or anything else you want to make, any other ephemera you have, you could just stick in there. And that's absolutely it. That's all you have to do. So when you do, if you do stick it on, just stick these three sides. Put a little bit of thin, thin bit of glue on those three sides. So it sticks there. And that's it. So it's up to you whether you want a little pocket on the front or not. But these make great gifts. They're great to use for yourself your hobby work or whatever you want to use it with so I hope this has been um, helpful this time I thought I would use some pretty paper because normally when I make 
my videos I just use any bit of scrap that I have to hand um, but I thought I would use something really pretty and, and give it a really good go showing you how nice these can look and they're so very easy to make aren't they they're not difficult at all so I'll leave links to all the products I've used in the description I know a lot of people don't know how to view the YouTube video descriptions but if you look under the video you'll see more it starts the description or the title and it just has more underneath it so you click on that and when that opens usually a bit of the way down that description you'll find another more link I know it's a bit confusing but you have to click more twice to get the full description and under there is where you'll find all the links and everything else as well and um, so that's it I really appreciate if you've stuck with me this long despite my ratty tatty delivery again I'm so sorry about that um, then I really appreciate I am very thankful to everybody who watches my videos anybody who subscribes shares anything like uh, likes them anything like that I am so grateful so thank you very much for sticking with me and have a wonderful day bye bye now